So the Sony State of Play, right off the bat, amazing show, amazing show. Um, I've got to say that I really enjoyed this format a lot more than I did the Developers Direct. My complaint to the Developers Direct from Xbox was that the developers talk too much. I honestly don't care about you walking through your office. I don't care about you even. Like, I want you to put out a good game and I want you to be happy, of course. But I don't need to see you. Like, when I go to buy any product, you know, whether that is a camera or a microphone, I don't care to know the people that designed it or the engineers behind it. I'm sorry, like, it's just not in my interest. So I just feel like this format that PlayStation puts forward with the state of play is just a lot more respectful of people's time, you know. I do not mind if you have a 30 second segment of one figurehead, okay, could be the director, could be the studio lead, whatever it is, you know, could just be the creative lead on a project, and they come out, you know, and they just give you a little bit of an overview about the game or the project or how, excite, how, how excited, how happy they are for it, and then they just leave. Like, that is literally perfect. Um, so, afterwards, if you wanted to do something akin to what the Xbox did, you should do what Xbox did when they did it for Avowed. Because for Avowed, even though they wasted a lot of time during the actual showcase, they then subsequently put out a separate video with a deeper dive into the game. And I think that's the best format. During the showcase, have something like the State of Play does. One figurehead, 30 seconds, hey, welcome to the games. We're really happy for you. We're really excited for you guys to play it. Everything, move on. And then later on, you can release a 15, 20, 30, even an hour video, like just a deep dive as a separate video for people that really want to invest themselves into your game, what it has to offer right away. So that is... Um, from the beginning, it's already like an 8 out of 10 format for me. Then, um, kind of overall impressions. This this show moved very quickly. It was super well paced. Um, even the PlayStation VR 2 segments, which do not appeal to me because I don't have PlayStation VR, um, were quick, they were punchy, and then they just left. So, it just really felt like it never really had like a downbeat or a down moment that was just like, protracted over a long period of time. So... I didn't like every single game, of course. Um, most of these games are not for me. Um, and we'll go through that. We'll go through the games. We'll go through the announcements. But I think that as a presentation, as a showcase of games, it did really well. And it did much better than last year's PlayStation Showcase. Because it actually showed you the games. I, I can't speak off the top of my head. But I think pretty much every single game featured gameplay. And uh, that's amazing to see. Right. So let's take a look at... Um, what we have here. So we began with um, a short trailer on Helldivers 2. And this trailer here is basically like the final who are. Right? Like we've seen this game before. But I think it's one of the nicer trailers. Like in terms of like showing you the vibe of the gameplay. And you know it's always kind of like this over the top. You know bombastic kind of action. Which is you know, which can be fun. My only complaint with this particular game. Is that PlayStation gamers have to pay more to play it. Than PC gamers, and I think that is tremendously wrong. Then uh, I've just got Alicia. Then we went to Stellar Blade, which is over here. Um, and Stellar Blade's trailer is my goodness, man. This game, <laughs> I think this trailer sold most people on this game. This trailer was fantastic. Um, it's basically near Automata 2.0. Like, let's be honest, the plotline is pretty much the exact same as near Automata. Um, you have a super hot looking Android, which is the exact same as Nier Automata. You have a drone, which is the exact same as Nier Automata. You have a scantily clad, um, so a female protagonist, exact same as Nier Automata. Uh, you have some kind of resistance that is on the ground, Nier Automata again. Pretty much every single bit from this game is pretty much Nier Automata. The only difference is that you are fighting organic life forms instead of robotic life forms for the most part. So... As a person who was a big fan of Nier Automata, they already had my vote. And hopefully they do not do any weird thing with like three storylines. Like, I just felt like Nier... Uh, so in Nier Automata, in case you haven't played it, there are basically three storylines. So what that means is that you will play the game and then you will get to the end and you will finish it. And then you will go back in time to pretty much the start of your adventure. But you will play the game again, but from the perspective of, a, of another character. And what I appreciate the idea... I just found no of the other, I just didn't find the other characters as compelling as 2B was, which was your primary character in the first place. So it would be like if you played this game, but now you start as playing as Eve here, 
And then the second playthrough, you play the exact same story again, but now you play from the perspective of Lily over here. And then the third playthrough, you play from the perspective of Adam. It's a good idea, but it feels extremely repetitive. And unfortunately, I just found that the open world that you actually play was just so soul-sucking. Like, it was just so boring, and it was so ugly. This world, it kind of has some of that vibe. Like, it does kind of have that ugly, empty, soulless vibe. But hopefully, when we actually get on the ground with this game, um, it just presents a lot better in terms of actually having the world being a character, not just a place where things happen. I know that that's not a popular opinion, by the way. I'm kind of like alone on this island, but I truly felt like the world of Nier Automata let it down for me. Okay, then uh, we went on to Sonic. Um, I'm not a Sonic fan. I never really understood the appeal, but I am glad that it exists for the people that enjoy it. So, you know, you guys enjoy it. Um, I don't know. I always found like these games are strangely bad looking, considering that they are so unreal, like literally unreal. Like why aren't your environments like mind blowing? You know, like you take a look at some of these cities in the background and it's just kind of like bog standard. And I'm always like, why? Like you literally don't have anything. Like look at those hills in the background. It's just like the grass. None of it is, I don't know. Maybe I wanted more. I don't think I want more realistic necessarily. I just want better looking environments and that space environment look good. So there's moments where it looks great. And then there's moments where I'm like, hmm, that's surprisingly disappointing considering that most of the environment is just background stuff that we'll never have to interact with. So you could make it nicer, right? Um, but yeah, in any case, uh, what was next? The next thing was going to be Zoneless Zone, Zenless Zone Zero. That is an alliteration which I appreciate, but it's definitely a tongue twister as well. This one kind of look cool. Um, it has something good looking for it. Um, the art style definitely looks very impressive. I think it was actually one of the best trailers in terms of like the music that they used for the game. Like it was just like, um, I think it's like techno music or house music, like electronic beats. And yeah, the, the music carried a lot for this trailer. And obviously it looks it looks pretty good, pretty impactful. We've no idea what's going on, but um, you know, if you're a fan of like the whole JRPG genres and everything, I can't imagine that you were disappointed by this particular showing. Like it just, it looked really cool. Um, not sure if it's for me, we'll see in the future. Then I believe it was Foam Stars. Yes, so they kind of have it in order here. Um, right, Foam Stars. Uh, Still not convinced, honestly. Uh, it is coming as part of PlayStation Plus, which I think is a godsend for this game. I don't think many people were going to take a chance, to be honest, on this particular game. I just don't think it shows well in the trailer. And it might be one of those things that just it just doesn't show well in the trailer, but it plays well once you actually play it. But yeah, it is definitely not um, for YouTube consumption. Like, it's just it just doesn't seem that appealing. But I feel the same way about Splatoon. Like, people say that Splatoon is a particularly great multiplayer game, and I just don't get it. Like, as a person that has never played it, Splatoon just doesn't look appealing to me. So maybe it's the exact same thing with this guy, considering it's pretty much a ripoff. You know, this is like square Splatoon, <laughs> you know. Um... Then I think it was Dave the Diver, um, which was one of the few indie games. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say indie because I think a few of these particular studios are actually independent. So let's just say that it's one of the few games of this particular vibe. Um, I'm not compelled by it. Um, I don't know. I played, what, what did I play? I played Subnautica. Uh, I'm not sure how relevant or how similar it is to Subnautica. But I just didn't really enjoy Subnautica um, after a few hours. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably give it a miss. In fact, I'll definitely give it a miss. It is what it is. Okay, so then we have uh, V Rising. So this is like Diablo, but with a vampire and with some kind of like crafting elements. Um, honestly, I'm not a fan of the whole crafting elements thing. I feel like I am overcrafted element. <laughs> like, I'm just like, ah. I don't want to build my base like I just want a cool story like give me a cool base that just like upgrades itself I don't know give me like a sentient castle that goes out and mines for its own ore so I can just focus on the combat but when it came to in terms of the combat it looks cool so you know maybe if it's like 99% combat and 1% crafting like maybe you fight enemies and then they drop like the mines and the ores and the wood pallets that you use to upgrade your castle if they do that, that's fantastic, because then I can just focus on doing combat and I don't have to go and mine, because, yeah, I just never understood their appeal. 
Okay, then we have Silent Hill, the short message. And this is a shadow drop. It turns out that PlayStation can do shadow drops too. Interesting. Unfortunately, it's a horror game and I do not play horror. But I've got to say, if you were going to come out with a very short experience, um, which I imagine this to only be about a 92 minutes to two hour experience. I'm not sure how long it is, by the way. I haven't looked it up. But I imagine it's only like a two hours or so experience at the most. Um, you should do something like this because it looks graphically stunning. Um, it looks compelling. It, it has this kind of, you know, true horror vibe. Like it feels like you will be scared shitless. And I can't wait to hear, you know, people's impressions of it. But for me, not, not at all. So... Same thing with Silent Hill 2, of course. Silent Hill 2, um, it showed more gameplay. I would say that Silent Hill 2, this remake, looks less graphically impressive than the short message just did. So, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, it would have been great to see the same visual quality applied to this entire game. But, like I said, I'm not a horror game fan. I'm not sure if horror game fans are even looking for like the most graphically stunning games. It is what it is. It's fine. Um, then we have Judas, and I think I think so far we actually have it. The only thing that was off here was the Rise of the Ronin, uh, which comes after Dragon's Dogma 2. So let's just go to Judas over here. Um, looks cool. I've never been a fan of Bioshock. Um, I've played, I've tried to play Bioshock Infinite, and I just always kind of just fall out of it. But I feel like it's kind of unfair because I never tried Bioshock and Bioshock 2. Because, again, I don't play horror games, and I'm not sure exactly how much horror to action they have. But as soon as you mention anything towards horror to me, it's just a massive turn-off. So, this, it looks cool. Um, it looks a bit like that other game that came out recently. What was it? It was like, it was it was based on, like, the Bioshock kind of vibe. Um, it was a male protagonist, and it was a base in Russia, I think. But, um, yeah, anyways... It, it, it's, it's this kind of, it's like a sub-genre of games, you know, where you kind of have this whole kind of like retro, futuristic kind of games. And, you know, you have like a lot of propaganda and lots of that like social commentary and everything. Look, the gameplay looks cool. Um, and it's definitely wild. And I think people will enjoy it. I'm just not sure that I'll be one of those people. Like, again, Bioshock has just never been that thing for me. But I know lots of people, it is exactly the thing for them. So enjoy, people. Then we had Metro Awakening. Okay, so yeah, this is a PSVR 2 game. Looks tremendously ex impressive, especially for PS PlayStation VR. Um, and I hope that one day, especially with PlayStation VR 3, I hope that we don't have to say that anymore. Oh, it looks good for VR. You know, it looks good for a VR game. I hope that it will get you the same way. It's just, I don't know, it just looks good. It's just, it just looks graphically impressive as a game. But this one does look exceptionally amazing for a PlayStation VR title. Um, and it's kind of sad that despite that, there are some companies out there that release first party games that don't even look half as good as PlayStation VR titles do. So, in any case, let's move forward. Legendary Tales. I don't, I think I completely zoned out this one. Oh, yeah, this one's a kind of fun one. This one kind of was like, it was like, um, it seemed like the whole premise was like, hey, whatever you can imagine doing in VR, yeah, we'll let you do it. You want to like hold your soul the wrong way? Yep. You want to throw it? Yep. You want to like catch a person's skull? Yep. You want to beat him in? Yep. You want to play multiplayer? Yep. Let's go. And like, it just seemed like, <laughs> you know, you could just do whatever you imagine doing in VR. And um, I think at some point, Broken Games mentioned that um, he's got a PlayStation VR too. And he basically said that, listen, I don't expect PlayStation Studios to be the best ones at making VR games. It has to be studios that are dedicated to the medium. It has to be studios that are dedicated to VR that are going to be the ones to make the best PlayStation VR 2 games. And I feel like there is something true to that because this game just seems to be like, yep, we are going to fully commit to the VR options and what you can do in VR. So, yeah, looks um looks great. So, enjoy it, people. Okay, Dragon's Dogma 2. I wasn't a fan of Dragon's Dogma 1. I sort of got the appeal, but I just, the story one, just, ah, the story just let me down. The graphics let me down. This one looks like more of the same. So, honestly, I mean, it looks better. Don't, don't let me, like, it looks much better. Let me not um take away any credit for me. But I don't know, the story-wise, it's just not doing it for me. Even though it should have that Dragon Age vibe, right? Like it, it has a party system, it has a main character who is special, um, it has dragons, and I'm a huge fan of dragons. 
So I don't know, I've just never really connected with Dragon's Dogma 1 and that is a reason that I hesitate to even look at this game as something that would be interesting to me. Maybe, um, what is it? Maybe when it actually comes out, I will find out that, hey, you are actually super into this series. So yeah, it could grab me, but at the moment, it just looks like an amazing trailer that other people would enjoy. So there it is. Um, okay, right after that, we actually had Rise of the Ronin. So before I go to Haunting Dawn, let's take a look at Rise of the Ronin first. That's the only title they kind of misaligned in this particular playlist. So yeah, oh man, let's take a look at, let's take a close look at Rise of the Ronin because the PS3 level graphics at this, at some point, like this part here, it's awful, man, bro. I cannot, I'm sorry, I can't with this game. I, I just can't. It, it's for other people. Like it definitely is. And yet, you have moments like this where it looks like PlayStation 4 level graphics. But what you'll notice here in the background is that if you look at these people down here in the background, they are actually animated at half the frame rate, it would seem, until you get closer to them. Like, they're very stuttery, if you guys can see that. Do you see how stuttery they are? And then when you get closer, that's when they kind of get the full animation sequencing. And then those guys in the background get to be stuttery as well. So they use those little tricks. And I don't know why, because it's not that much crowd density. It's not that much game population. You see how like the anti-aliasing kind of like jitters and everything and jagged edges showing up over there. And this city just doesn't look good to me. These trees don't look good to me. They're not as bad as Halo Infinite trees, but they just look like four sprites that were just put together um like these trees are very three-dimensional it just looks like yeah they just put three-dimensional jpegs in different directions and then that's supposed to like make up a 3d tree and yeah this city just doesn't look good to me and i'm not going to be playing this game there's lots of popping going on it's just you know look at look at the environmental detail it's just not there and you see popping everywhere like everywhere um but you know close to the player further away so graphically not the best gameplay wise it looks like a really great take on what um ghost of tsushima delivered just without the like imagine guys if this looked as good as ghost of tsushima just on ps4 that would be so much more compelling because it's essentially that game it's like a different ver it's like ghost of tsushima with guns basically like just to like make it very very simple but look at that grass ah nah i'm not doing this not for me um enjoy it for the people that can you know enjoy this because i think gameplay wise is definitely more fantastical than ghost of tsushima obviously um so it definitely has something to offer there um, I think they even mentioned at some point that they have stances. I can't really see anything on the UI that would suggest that. But they said either you choose the best weapon or you choose the best weapon stance for different particular enemies. So either way, they kind of have that idea, again, lifted from Ghost of Tsushima, that you're going to adjust your combat style depending on, um, you know, the enemies that are with you. And they have, you know, like I said, they have fantastical weapons, you know, like the fire stick over here, which is basically a flamethrower. So... Yeah, it's funny because the gameplay is definitely 10 out of 10, but the graphics is like a 3 out of 10, man. And I'm just, nah. If you guys are like, oh, graphics shouldn't be everything. Well, well, graphics are important to me. So it's like, it's whatever. It's my gaming time. And if my eyes are supposed to look at something good. Like this part over here is basically the charge at the beginning of Ghost of Tsushima. And it's just so shit. <laughs> like, I'm just like, bro. It is popping. It. But nah, get this game out of my face. Enjoy it, guys. It's, it's just, don't mind me. I'm just a hater. Okay, Until Dawn. Okay, over here. So this is technically a remake uh, because they built it again in a new engine, in Un Unreal Engine 5. But it looks more like a remaster. I will have to see side-by-side -side comparisons in order to see, like, is this one of those moments where um, you imagine Until Dawn in your mind and then you're like, oh my god, it looks so amazing. And then you look at this remaster, or just remake, whatever, and then you're like, hmm, not much has changed. And then you go back and you look at the side by side and you're like, oh, it was actually just my brain making the old one look better. So it could exactly be that. But I don't know. This feels like a nice to have. Um, this just a small little point. This feels a little bit like they basically built this game for PC. And then they were like, okay, since we're going to give the improvements for PC, let's just create a PS5 version so that they can also have it. And I don't mind that. I've always said that if you're going to go and build something new for PC and you cannot take advantage of more capabilities than the PlayStation 4, 
you should put it on PlayStation 5. You know, like you're already building the project again. I don't think it will cost you that much more to put it on PlayStation 5 anyway. So it seems like that's what they've done. Enjoy it to the people that enjoy it. Best trailer of the damn year. Oh. This is the best trailer that has come out in probably since the Forbidden West trailer. Um, in terms of just graphical game, like this, this trailer is amazing. Um, nine minutes well spent. Um, it's it's obviously a Kojima trailer. You are never going to understand what the hell is going on. Um, if you have played the first Death Stranding, then you understand more of what's going on. He's actually been a lot more revelatory. He's been a lot more. I don't know, transparent than I thought this first trailer would be. I, I, I honestly thought coming into this trailer that it was just going to be a Kojima fest. Like, you have truly no idea what's going on. But he actually gave us a lot more than I thought he would give us. Uh, I feel like I understood maybe 30% of what was going on in the trailer. And honestly, I expected to understand maybe 2%. So it is, it is a huge, huge thing. So I want make any theories about what's going on exactly here i will leave that to the law people you know the channels that are dedicated to this stuff but um it definitely looks cool and compelling and you know look at look at the freaking decimal engine man it is truly truly amazing like it's just it's stunning like this i don't know why they're in blue here maybe maybe they're going through the veil or the strands or the beach or whatever it is but um in any case i, I, I was worried for a second that they were going to go in assistance mode all the time but thankfully they go back to like real time color and you know there's mimia <laughs> there's death stranding's mimia over here so that's cool uh you know playstation studios always doing the same thing even the exact same butt chick as uh, mimia is on um, but yeah, so I like that they put that little Easter egg joke in there. But look at this world, man. Like, wow. <laughs> I, wow. <laughs> look at it. It's just, man. If every game could look like this, guys, would, oh, man. Yo, Decima Engine has to be sold out to more people, bro. This game is stunning. I don't know what this engine does, but it is. Every time you see it in a new game, it just seems to basically shit on the last iteration like this makes horizon forbidden west look like a demo kit like i was just like whoa this engine is just tripping i don't get it man i really don't get it like i'm just like and i and i know forbidden west obviously was a playstation 4 title so it, it kind of makes sense when you think about it that a natively built playstation 5 title in that engine would just flex muscles but man Boy, this is the reason you get a new console. This engine is tremendous. Oh my god. Look at it. Dude, when you compare this to the first game, you're like, what? There's a night scene? <laughs> yeah, actually, that's funny, isn't it? Because in the first game, there was no real night. I think most, like 99% of the game was just in broad daylight. Like, it would get rainy and it would get cloudy. Um, and then there will be some snowy, stormy areas that are dark. But there was no true night. If this has a day and night cycle, oh my goodness, that would be so amazing. Especially if you get to see, like, more stranded um, people during the night. But then better rewards. Oh my god, it would be so cool. But look at this engine, bro. Look at the flex. Oh my god, this game is just, it's a feast for the eyes, man. Like, I just want to play this. Just just the graphics alone. Oh, by the way, I am one of those people that loved um, Death Stranding, um, the first one. I planned them, did put 115 hours, I think, into it. What the hell, bro? This engine should be illegal. Like, it, it should either be illegal or it certainly should be forced by a court to send it over to every single, every single publisher. Like, every single one. Like, they should have the option whether or not they use this engine or not. Like, it should just be, it should be, um, it should be available for free like my god look at that wow so in any case um i am one of those people that already love the premise of death stranding so i was always going to enjoy it death stranding too uh we are actually getting far sooner than i thought we would so that's amazing and yeah man it's just a vibe i just i just love this game and they seem to have made a lot of improvements to the gameplay. Now that we have these robotic enemies, these robotic porters, it means we can actually kill people. Because in the first game, 
You were not supposed to kill anyone. You were extremely disincentivized from killing anyone. And that was just not good. Um, I also would like if there, there will be more interactions between the robot porters and the actual um, stranded, like, you know, so that you could get into moments where maybe you can trigger an actual, like, death stranding event or an actual stranding event, and then you will have the bitch things fighting against the robots, so on and so forth. I mean, that would be fantastic, right? Like, there can be a lot more gameplay explored because you are having that moment and obviously we get Higgs back here you know Troy Baker coming in again and he's just putting in an amazing performance um no I, I I really really love this and then this guy over here goes on vampire mode for some reason so <laughs> you know go ahead and, and 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 do that um then we have this really crazy over the top super animes just like it's amazing this is it, it's like that certainly is so funny because it's like it has the most ridiculous concepts like you just like what what's going on and yet in, in in the world it works like it's like it's one of those things that's like hey believe in me believe in my ridiculousness nonsense and just just come in and just have a great time and yet it's so serious at moments you know like you're truly supposed to care it's not one of those things where you just kind of go with the flow and you turn your brain off like it's like no it demands that you believe and you stay in this universe and this fantasy it demands so much of you as a player to commit to the stories and to the characters and to the themes that it is saying and yet it's fucking ridiculous like it's 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 such a weird blend of things and like uh death stranding was my first hideo kojima game so it could be like that with all of his projects like when you think about it you're like dude we're doing really silly over the top things and yet when you're in the moment in the universe it just seems to make so much sense it's like a universe written with different rules so it's going to be called death stranding 2 on the beach and uh yeah sounds great sounds great and just a visually stunning trailer so then the final thing that they had to announce was that they basically created an announcement for a future announcement i guess but they're basically telling us that um kojima is going to be creating a new metal gear kind of game and maybe that's actually the best for me because i missed out on the metal gear series so maybe it would actually just be better for me to see what you know like he said the culmination of his entire life's work will, will look like in a metal gear type of game and i just imagine that it's going to be just as crazy if not more so as death stranding 2. so yeah overall guys i truly truly enjoyed this particular presentation i just thought that it was fast it was well paced it didn't waste my time even the games that i don't particularly care for they came in and then they kind of went by uh, obviously as a huge death stranding fan getting in at the end of the of, of the thing there for a whole basically 10 minute presentation that was definitely amazing um a lot of the dates were actually a lot of dates were revealed i didn't talk about that but a lot of games were coming very soon actually uh for example stellar blade is in april you know that's <laughs> you know that's barely a stone's drop away um held out is coming february 6 uh firm stars i think is coming actually no held out is coming i don't know exactly what date is coming but it's coming soon um is it february 8th firm stars is coming february 6 um yeah, a lot of dates were announced. Like, there's just lots of games um, that were here. And it's funny because it's, we still don't really have a lot of things for the back, e back half of this year. Um, Death Stranding 2 is in 2025, so it's going to not ship this year. But it's, it's, it's like we still need more. <laughs> that That's funny because it's like you, you just got a huge amount of games, a huge amount of impressive games. And yet, because very few of them fill out the back half of this year then you know that definitely there will be like a holiday title and everything. And they mentioned that there will be a secondary state of play on February 6th. My goodness, they have a lot to announce, right? And I think that will be the holiday release, right? I think that makes sense. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will be the November, you know, kind of like this is your your gift for making it to the end of the year. So, wow, amazing presentation. Um, I'm, I'm going to say 9 out of 10, you know. Because it's a state of play. I think if it was a showcase, it would be an 8 out of 10. 
if it was a showcase, I would have liked to see first party studio games like give me the Naughty Dogs, give me the Santa Monica's, give me the Sucker Punches, you know, give me some of the other studios, um, Gorillas, you know, I know that Gorilla just put something, uh, Insomnia can obviously take a break, um, but yeah, so if it was a showcase, first party should have shown up more, like where's Concord, where's Fair Games, um, what else do they have, Marathon, you know, or even um, Destiny 2, I think they have like the light something, the light bringer <laughs> or whatever they call their DLC. They, they would have had to show up because that would be what a PlayStation Showcase should have. But as a state of play, sh- the expectations are lower. And this thing hit them out of the park. It, it was a better showcase than last year's PlayStation actual showcase. And it's definitely a 9 out of 10. I think to make it a 10 out of 10, bring one of those first party out you know like that would have been the thing bring me what sony centers one well what sony's santa monica studio is on yeah santa monica what they what are they on about you know they can't just stay on god of war they've got to let that franchise breathe for a little bit or i mean an interest dlc will also be fine but let let god of war breathe show me what the new project is about and that would have made it a 10 out of 10 uh but yeah i am extremely happy with this showcase i was supposed to come here for only a few minutes but kind of like reviewing the the list of games with you guys i'm just like yeah man these these games were good (laughs) these were great games this was a great format um yeah bravo okay i'm out of here have a good time